Hey, what's going on, guys and gals? Paul Soros Jr. here. Welcome to another fine edition of Indie Game Test Drive. Today is March 16th, 2013, and we are about to take Drift Moon out for a little spin. And you, of course, are invited to come along for the ride. All I ask is that you sit back and relax, put your seatbelt on, and keep your hands and feet in the vehicle at all times. And I should be able to get you home in one piece. And by the way, I don't have insurance, so just keep that in mind. Now, before we hop in and start playing the game, and uh, that indeed is essentially how this works as I play the game and you get to watch and listen and learn. And if it's something that you're interested in, you can, of course, head over to the website and purchase the game or even try a demo. Uh, but before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about the people responsible for Drift Moon. And here they are right here, this lovely young couple wielding hammers. We've got Anne and Vil A. Uh, Monkanen. <laughs> And I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. But they are a married couple, and they have, um, they've they been working on Drift Moon now for seven years. It's finally out. It just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's available on uh, on GOG.com, Gamersgate, Desura, and their own website. And it's about 15 bucks. Again, relevant links will all be down in the description below. Okay, having said that, let's hop in and play. All right, I have a game already in progress, so why don't we go ahead and choose that one. And it's this one right here, Sir Punch with level 12, 300 minutes in. And by the way, you can pretty much save it at any time. There's no penalty as far as I could uh, determine. And let's get out of the town square. It's a little noisy in there. Let's go down here and chat while it's a little quieter. So um, this game is a an adventure slash RPG slash role-playing game. At least that's what the developer is billing it as and i think that's a fair assessment it's got elements from both genres both art role playing and adventure um clearly they've decided on an isometric old school top down view with an angle that you may not be used to this is uh, it's a it's a sharper top down angle than that i've ever seen in a role playing game before and it was a little off-putting the first time I saw it. I was like, oh my god, I don't think I can play that game. But then I started playing. And within five minutes of getting into the story and talking to people and walking around the world and and just, uh, just getting immersed in the game itself, that I had completely forgotten about it. And it doesn't bother me in the least. So don't let that concern you, really. And if it looks like it might, then you must at least try the demo. For your own sake, try the demo. Okay. Here we are at the monastery and level 12, so I've got all kinds of goodies I can show you now. I've acquired many skills in my career as a uh, as a young hero, but why don't we go back to the beginning, and I'm going to press my M key and bring up the local map here. You can see um, these, these markers, and this is me right here, the flashing little uh, down arrow, but I'm going to click on the world map and bring that up. And these are the locations I have been to so far. These will not show up until you discover these locations and you start here in Northrop. Now, when I was in Northrop, oop, I didn't mean to do that, but this is one of the nice things about this game is you can fast travel not only on the world map, but you can fast travel to these locations on the map. Now, here's where the seven years comes into play. <laughs> seven years in the making. The developers have really put a ton of care into just the little things like that. The, the attention to detail is, is just lovely. Oh my gosh, I missed a silver feather. Look at that. And this is why you will be rewarded for searching every nook and cranny in this game. There's so many little hidden features. Uh, I, I love it. How did I miss these? Oh, wait a minute. Somebody must be sprinkling more silver feathers and maybe I... Maybe I just I was blind. Anyway, so here's mom, right? So mom, in the beginning, you're a teenager and you're la 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 la, skipping around like a, you know, like a normal teenager, not really having many cares in the world. Um, and mom just shows you into the well, and you're like on your way down. Mom, I already took a bath. But then you find your way out. Um, that's your first quest, by the way. And you find your way out, and you discover that everyone's been turned, well, to stone, including mother. Um, although there is one one youngster here that uh, was overlooked by the bad guys that did all this, and he kind of gives you your initial clues and in your first couple of quests, and you go off. Uh, in fact, you kind of hang out with him for a little while, and um, let's get back to the monastery. And then you discover that uh, your dad was involved in some mysterious. Um, well, he found some kind of a gemstone, 
and somebody else wants it. So they came, they turned everybody to stone, and they took your dad. So your dad's gone. So this is where the story begins. You have to find your father, find out what's going on, and restore everybody back to um, living flesh. And, uh, of course, you will meet many people along the way. You'll find all kinds of good stuff. And uh, you can even get companions. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I have this little green um, fairy following me around. A firefly. I'm not a fairy. It's a firefly. And his name is his or her name. I don't know. Maybe unisex or something. Uh, asexual. Come here, you little asexual firefly. I'm trying to click on you. And you can talk to your little fizz friend here. And you can have him follow you at a certain distance. And... And he offers some light for me, so he's got some skills too. He's got some elite skills, and one of them is provide light. Of course, I can provide my own light if I want. And why don't we, uh, let's demonstrate how this interface works. So we've got your hot bar down here, as you have come to know and love in most uh, RPGs. You've got your health and your mana, of course, and you've got all these skills. And I have acquired these skills throughout my journey here. And even some items that have abilities that can be activated as well. If I press the uh, shift key, it'll bring up another bar here, and I've got some items in here. You've got to check out these light boots I found. Really cool. I got these from the Boogeyman, by the way. He's really freaky. Wait till you see him. Um, but I can also, ping, give myself some light. And here's one of the things that I just love about this game, is you can walk around, you can turn on little lights here and there, you can turn them off, you can move things around, you can, uh, can't move the oyster, but you'll find stuff here and there. I just, it's just so charming. It's, uh... I don't know what else to say about it. This game kind of reminds me of like a, it's a mom and pop shop that you go shopping in that you know the owners just absolutely take so much pride and they love their shop so much. They they care for their they care for their customers. Um, they really spend a lot of time trying to uh, you know spending on the details and making your your visit there, your shopping experience, one that you will never forget, or one that you will remember and always come back. And that's that's the best analogy I can make for this game. It just feels like a, a nice, comfortable mom and pop shop, and they just love it. They just love it. Okay, <clears throat> now let's play. <laughs> so why don't we chat with? Well, let's go in town here, and I'm I'm just gonna try to blast through this. I don't want to show you too many things that are gonna spoil the experience for you because there are quests in here. Um, but I'll talk to a few of these folks, and I'm not going to save anything. I'm going to buzz through this pretty quickly. There's a lot of conversation, particularly when you run into a town like this. Um, why don't we talk to this little fellow over here? As you can see, I've already talked to him because these are now grayed out. These choices would be red had I not chosen them. But why don't we take a look at his food? And here we have the um, buying and selling interface. This is obviously all my stuff that I have in my backpack, and this is the stuff that I can purchase. You can buy uh, food. Let's buy some evil berry juice. I can buy one of them. And as you can see there, my food is now up to 16. And I can sell stuff to him too, although I don't think I have anything for sale yet. I have some extra gear here that I'm holding on to for a companion, a human companion that can carry that stuff. So goodbye. Why don't we, uh, let's go talk to Fred the Piper. I have not spoken to Fred the Piper. I'm going to give you an example of the, um, of the, of the conversations here. Some of them can be very verbose and you can either skip through them really quickly or you can pay attention and get involved in the story. It's a very lighthearted RPG. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of comedy. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously. All right, he stops playing. What up, man? All right, so he's kind of hard of hearing here. I'm gonna go through this quickly. If you wanna pause and read, that's fine. Uh, have you thought of taking that profession? So now I get a quest. So. Here we go. I've got a hearing aid quest, and we are definitely going to go find a hearing aid for our, f our friend Fred here. Because I have a feeling he's going to play a another role in this someday. Who knows? Now, if you want to get to your, your quest log, you can press Q or bring it up here, and you can see all of your active quests, or rather the quests that you have not completed, and you can choose the active quest. So we've got Annie and William. We've got the hearing aid man, and we'll just stick with the hearing aid man for now. And I'm going to make a purchase here from Francie. Um, I'm going to see what you're selling. Because I wanted to show you blueprints. So there, uh, there's a little bit of crafting. It's not, it's not extensive or robust or anything. You basically, you'll find or you'll purchase blueprints. So I'm going to purchase this blueprint right here, uh, uh, the Mana Mine. I'm going to go ahead and buy that for 84 gold. Now I'm down to 100. But let me show you what you can do with this. Goodbye. Let's go outside. And I'm going to bring up my inventory, and I'm going to show you messages. 
and crafting. So right here, oh, I already had a mana. Did I already have one? I guess I did. I'll have to sell that back. Oh, that was really dumb now, wasn't it? Um, the one I wanted was the antidote. Um, anyway, so now to make things from blueprints, it's just a simple matter of clicking and you can create it. That's, um, that's the crafting. So why don't we go ahead and create another mana mine? I've already got one. And now I've got two. And you can put that again. You put that in your hot bar. And you can drop those suckers down and blow stuff up. So that was a waste of money. But, again, I'm not going to save this. I'm going to go back and uh, restart and play later. Um, a panther. So here's a, an example of getting a companion. And you'll find these guys along the way. I've had, I've had at least two other companions that I've lost so far. Um, and I'm going to grab another one right now for 100 gold. Let me get this kitty cat. Meow. Yes, you take orders from me now. I'm just going to buzz through this so I don't spoil it all for you. And now I have Velvet the Panther Queen with me as a compatriot. And she's going to help out in the combat. So why don't we... Uh, let's go get in a fight. Let's go get in a fight. I think there's a fight over this way. And then we'll, then we'll head up to the monastery. I know there is a monastery up here. We can do one of these quests. But I think it's time to demonstrate some battle. Here's one of the things I love about this, uh, the attention to detail. Just the little things that you can look at and move around. And it is, believe me, it's worth your time. And the heavier stuff is harder to move. It's just click and drag to move things around because you'll find stuff hidden underneath. Sometimes hidden chambers, sometimes silver feathers, goldfish, and other stuff. Yeah, and goldfish, by the way. Let me bring up my skills. How do I get to skills? Uh, quest log. Here we go. Here's my skills. So these are things that I've acquired over my uh, period of time that I'm playing, and my stats. And we have talents. So you can there are I think three levels in total, or maybe four. Yeah, apprentice, advanced, master, and well that's it. So three. So these goldfish you can find laying around the world. There are 13. I found one so far. So there's a lot of little hidden things. It's one of the, one of the attention to detail. Um, things that I had mentioned earlier that I just absolutely love about this. And here we go with a little combat, which... Uh, okay, these are the Rakan guys. These are the guys that were responsible for making my mom into stone. So we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give us some payback. All right. Now, uh, combat is possible simply by hitting the, uh, the space bar, which is pretty cool. And then you can think about what you want to do. And you can actually just queue these things up. So I'm going to queue up. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a blessing. It doesn't actually queue. That happens instantly, I think. But So that is kind of a, a timed um, buff for myself. And then I'm going to hit these suckers with a whirlwind. And you'll note that when I do these, it's going to use up mana. Um, even as a fighter, you're using mana here to power your talents and stuff. So there we go. Bam! Uh, let's see. So Snot is hurt. Hiss is pretty hurt. Goober is a little hurt, too. And why don't we... Uh, this guy's cool. You want to check out... Let's check out my, my summon... My stone giant. He's pretty awesome. There he goes. He's gonna he's gonna start pounding. And I'm gonna use one of my crushing blow skills. I will hit this guy with a shield bash. So combat is um if I have any complaint or niggle, I can't call it a complaint. Let's let's call it a niggle. Combat isn't as robust as I would like it to be, but again, this is more really uh, emerging between adventure and roleplay. So I don't know too many adventure games that have um, complicated or super tactical combat or anything. So it's just enough. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it. You can actually control the amount of, com of, of combat you have in here and how hard the enemies are. I'm at the... There are four levels. I'm at the third level from the highest... Uh, at the highest. So um, I chose to have a little bit difficult enemies. More enemies and more difficult. And here we go. Here we have a little... Uh, piece of paper, and I'm not really reading these. I just want to. I want you guys to experience as much of this game as possible. So I'm going to kind of blast through this stuff. But as you can see, there's a lot of text to read, and you probably should read it. <laughs> All right. So I think we have a new quest. Here's something I really adore: just being able to click torches on and off, close the door behind me, move stuff around. Just loving it. Now, my little friend Fizz here is giving off a little light. And I, I don't know if you noticed in the talents, but I can actually... Uh, let's bring up my talents here. I can um, I can buff up my Firefly here, Fizz. So I can give Fizz the ability to stun, which he has right now. This is at level 2, advanced. If I go to Master, his, his light will actually hurt enemies. 
Um, I don't have any points to spend there. You get those on level up. And we are just about to pop, actually. And I'll show you how to do that. No problem, Sir Punchwood. My light's bright as ever. And let's just go up here to the monastery. We have a quest. Open up. I'm just going to blast through this, if you don't mind, to take a look at the letter. There we go. Da, 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 da. Leveled up into the Monk of Waterfowl. Um, I am Abbot Fern. What is this about? Show you the letter. There you go. Anyway, so let's um, let's level up. Let's level up. I'll let you guys discover the story on your own. How's, how's that? Okay, level 13. And we have these primary attributes here that we can upgrade if we'd like. And each one controls uh, certain aspects of your physical and intelligence. So why don't we do this? We have strength... That makes me hit harder. Dexterity is good. Agility is low, but I have some magic to offset. Um, constitution is minus one. Let's bump up the constitution. I have a, an item that I'm wearing that is knocking that down by one, so let's offset that. Bump it up. And here we can choose a talent. So you can do archery or melee. I don't do a whole lot of archery. Melee, I find, is pretty effective. Morale... Right, I'm going to hold off on these, but here's here's an example of what you can get. And we're not going to do those right now. Let's go and let's have a walkabout in, in the monastery. Here's some bushes. Again, here's your food. And if you eat, your level will rise up a little bit. And these bushes just grow in the wild. And they will eventually, those berries will grow back over time. So you can return when you wish. That's fire. Oh, I can put the holy fire out. Holy. I don't want to do that. There's some little writings on the stones here. Oh, there's a dude. Uh, let's go over here. I know there's a quest. Well, let me show you some of the things you can do in the game world itself. You can light stuff up. You can steal. <laughs> you can move things. And as you saw earlier, I found those silver feathers that increase your mana, your uh, your permanent mana attribute, score, whatever, and you want to move stuff around to find those. Ah, oh, see, some coins. This is where I really enjoy the interface. Uh, it's real simple to click on things and click and move and drag. I haven't encountered any serious bugs or I haven't gotten stuck anywhere or anything. Um, I suppose seven years in the making will do that. There we go. There's a dude. Door's locked. Leo. Let's chat with Leo. I'm going to bust through here. He's going to tell me where the key is. I think. And... Did he? Alright, let's bring up our journal here. Um, let's go do this one instead. <laughs> ah! All right, puzzle. Here's where we get the puzzles. Oh, there's a bird in there. So, if you have the wherewithal and uh, you like puzzles, then you'll probably enjoy some of these things. I'm not a huge fan of puzzles, but... But if you're not, then don't worry about it because there really aren't that many. All right, let's go down here in this portion of... The monastery, and we'll do some. Uh, here, let's let's use death cap to light stuff up. This is kind of a purpley light. Because I can turn on the canvas. So here's something that will. Ah, yes, good. It opens up a new area. So here's how you locate new areas: either through quests, or talking to people, or finding uh, maps on monks' quarters desks. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and burglarize all these monks' rooms. The poor guys don't have much, right? I mean, they pretty much give up all their worldly possessions for just a few things, and here I am, scoffing it all. I can't reach that one. Get that candle. I just pushed the bed out of the way. Oh, here's... Okay, yeah, this is William, I think. He's silent monk. Let's see what he's got to say. <laughs> Who are you? So I've already gone through these, actually, just to save time. All right, it must be difficult to stay quiet all day. Take care, brother. Wait, I have something for you. 
I've got to give him the family heirloom. Oh, silver feather. Um, maybe I didn't get his heirloom yet, did I? And his necklace. Yes, that's the one. Dude, I have a del oh there it is. I have a delivery from Annie. Take it. And that'll complete that quest, or at least move me on to the next leg of it. Um, I'd like to get into a little more combat, actually. Strange liquid. To show you a few more of the combat skills that I have. Um, let me see. I don't think I'm going to get in a fight in the, in the monastery. So how about if I go find, uh, let's see, let's go find a fight. And then, and then we'll be back. So stay tuned. There's some more cool stuff I want to show you. Hang on. Oh, goldfish. Goldfish. There's a goldfish. Well, there's one of the elusive goldfish. So that's the second one out of 13 in the world. And I'm going to have to get over there somehow to get that sucker. But there it is. Maybe I can walk around the monastery. Quack. Thank you, Pearl. Found a pearl, and here's the goldfish. Perfect. Got it. Ah, okay, there we go. Some spiders. Ooh, let me take their stuff first, and then we'll kill them. Um, I wonder if I could put a mine down. No, I'm stuck. Nailed them. Kind of hurt myself, but didn't I? Oh, here comes my bird. It's gonna save me. Save me, bird. Feagle. Saved by Feagle. All right, let's hit him hard. There we go. Good work, companions. Now I have these. Pretty cool items here. So let me show you one of them. These light boots are a lot of fun. I got these off the boogeyman. And when you encounter the boogeyman for the first time, it's rather disturbing. <laughs> it's in a dark place, and he kind of just appears behind you. It's really freaky. I don't want to tell you when it happens or where it happens, but just be prepared for it. But he does have these nice boots. Great thing about these boots is you can follow your way out if you get lost in some sort of uh, in a, uh, a maze or something. These berries weren't ripe yet. That's nonsense. It's a locked door. All right. Well, I think I think that's about as much as I'll I'll show you in this particular. Um, test drive because uh, there really isn't much more to show you without spoiling a whole bunch and ruining the fun for you. Oh, silver feather powder. I'm just going to rob this guy blind as he watches. The abbot. Um, can I move his bed? Yeah. Probably got, don't All abbots probably have something hidden under their beds. It's just my guess. Oh, it's a heavy bed though. It's a double. It's a double. Oh, check out my clown nose. That means there's an enemy nearby. My Rudolph knows here. If it flashes red like that, did what was I telling? You? Did I tell you there was hidden stuff under the abbot's bed? I... Well, you've been drinking again, buddy. The abbot's been boozing it. We got some empty flasks down there. All right, maybe he's an enemy. Why would my nose flash right now? Unless there's enemies behind this wall. Let me show you my nose. It's Rudolph's nose. And it, uh, yes, it flashes red to warn me. Must be an enemy somewhere. Now it's green. Yep. I'm on to you, pal. He's hiding something. Let's see. All right, I think that's about it as far as the gameplay goes for this particular episode. What I'd like to do now is let's exit out of the actual game and get back to the main screen and there's a couple more things i'd like to share with you here so let's take a look at um the mods check out this mod so there it does ship with a uh a modding kit and you can actually create your own mods right here just by clicking on that and this 
will show you a list of all the mods already available that people have already put together here so for example um, if you're an arachnophobe you don't like spiders just simply install the cardboard box spider and <laughs> and it's real easy to do uh, you just click on it and install it and there it is boom done now I'm now how do I I don't really want that one but ah anyway all right well let's go back now I'm not sure how to delete it all right I just did some investigation and apparently there is no way to remove this from within the interface yet you have to get down into the file system and delete a folder um, the developer said that they will put a, uh, a button in here so you can remove it but not to worry as long as you don't click on the mod here it won't be loaded anyway so if you just go back to play drift moon or continue last save the mods not loaded to explicitly load a mod you have to actually come in here and click on it all right well i think that's it i hope you all enjoyed this test drive of drift moon and if it looks like something you're interested in then head on over to instantkingdom.com once again the link is down below and and buy it it's only 15 bucks us or if you're still not sure then at least try the demo there's a demo there as well. So, all right. We'll see you all soon. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.